What's going on guys? It's the beer one back here with another beer review. I know I always say they're special, but this one is special to me. Uh, largely in part because it was kind of an accident. Uh, I wasn't searching out this beer, but turns out this, if you're a fan of Allagash, you might be seeking this beer out. Um, this will be Allagash Brewers Bridge. They uh, collaborated with Brasserie DuPont in Belgium. So it's a one of a kind limited edition uh, beer. It just so happened to make its way to Decatur, Alabama and I saw it on the singles rack um, where my favorite beer store keeps their singles. And um, I'm kind of making a, a bigger push on the channel here to get some more nationally recognized uh, beers under my belt and reviewed and uploaded so I can bring some more attention to the channel I know I tend to uh, I tend to review uh, kind of niche and uh, weird breweries I guess uh, regional breweries um, so yeah here's one from Allagash I feel like a lot of people know about Allagash if you're into beer they're a big brewery in Maine uh, there, uh, I watched a documentary recently, and if you like beer documentaries, which I assume you would if you're here on this channel, um, the Craft Beer Channel, that's what they're called, the Craft Beer Channel on YouTube, uh, they did a documentary within the past year called, I think it's One for the Road, Searching for a New England, uh, and Allagash is in there, you'll find, um, a pretty cool segment on Allagash and they're uh, they're really uh, inspired by Belgium and they make a lot of Belgium inspired beers more on the traditional side than like you know how a lot of breweries here like to do they like to Americanize things and I think they do Americanize things but uh, I think it's more on the traditional side uh, just some quick little notes about this uh, Brasserie DuPont is from Belgium, so it wasn't an all-American collaboration, and when I found that out just a few minutes ago, doing some research for the video, uh, that made this review even more special, and this beer even more special to me. Um, Brasserie DuPont's been brewing since, where did it say, 1844. And I don't want to spoil too much. Go to their website, uh, the Allagash website, and you'll find uh, a page on this beer. And you can even go to their Instagram where they have stories uh, about this brew day. that Because the, they actually went to Brasserie. It wasn't Brasserie coming to Allagash. They went to Brasserie and hung out with their brewmaster, Olivier, or Olivier, however it's pronounced in Belgium. And they even got to brew it in copper vessels that date back to 1920. So just a lot of cool information on there. I don't, I don't want to just uh, spit out everything at, at you. Uh, one last thing you might find interesting. Uh, they did brew it with Belgium's famous Saison DuPont yeast. So, and then there's Cascade hops in this. So. That's all for the notes. I uh, might be interested in the kind of yeast they use. They really went traditional with this, I think. Uh, I don't want to read any taster's notes or read the bottle. We're already four minutes into this. It is a Saison, by the way, and I do know I'm uploading a Saison review uh, in November. Whenever I decide to upload this, I've got a few videos in my queue. Uh, that I'm trying, I'm trying to pace out my reviews so I can keep the content steady. Frothy. I don't. I was scared I couldn't finish pouring it, and this glass is what I use for when I want to aggressively pour something because it's bit. It's, it's supposed to hold more than your standard like 12, 16 ounce bottle of beer. Um, it says here on the, on the uh, bottle, they brewed it with barley, rye, and oat, so, and there was only Cascade in it, so if I'm just going to eyeball the mash bill, I would say this is a, um, a malt Ford beer. 
Saisons are usually malt forward, but I think Americans like to hop them up a little bit. Uh, Not a lot going on on the bottle. I didn't want to read it. I basically spitballed everything for you already. Very thick foam, frothy. Uh, it's not coming down. Um, there's some citrus in here. It kind of reminds me of a heffy kind of reminds me of a wit. Uh, I'm, I'm fairly new to Saison, so I'm, I'm not sure what I'm getting into. I read a little bit, you know, reading on that, that page earlier, they were saying the style of Saison is kind of vague and it can, Saisons can vary and still be it within style. So that was pretty interesting that this is going to be, uh, this could be, this could be anything, really, uh, and still be a Saison, as long as it's brewed with the the staple Saison ingredients, I guess. Okay, I smell like Cascade. You know, it's it's a little more on the, the citrusy side um, for a European beer. Which again, it's Cascade. It's not a German noble hop, so the, that's right there. It's a C hop, and those are usually citrusy by nature. It's a little more on the lemon side, I would say. Try to swirl it around, get some of this froth to come down. Very good head retention. Excellent head retention. It's a very delicate nose. It's hard for me to pick up a whole lot. I'm picking up a little bit of malt. Um, there, there was rye, oat, and barley in this, so there's three different kinds of malt. It's pretty delicate. Uh, I'm just not getting a lot on the nose. If you happen to re be reviewing this beer with me, uh, maybe you'll get some more, but for me personally, I'm just getting that citrus cascade note. I mean, yeah, I'm barely getting anything else. I think there's some malt there, and maybe that's because my brain knows there's three different types of malt in it. But let's get into the best part of the beer review. I believe there's sediment in this beer. There are some orange specks floating around in my head. It reminds me, yeah, there's definitely, there's sediment in this, so they didn't filter it a whole lot. It, it, it's very, very hazy. I hate saying hazy, it's well overused. Yeah, it's muddled up. There's carbonation dancing around in it. Uh, you can see, I don't feel like the color is far off from what the camera's showing. It's it's a very deep, deep gold, with, and it gets kind of... It gradually gets more pale as it gets to the bottom of the glass, and you've got sediment in here, so yeah, not very filtered. Very little carbonation, so it's not prickly at all. Uh, it, it's almost like water in terms of the carbonation. Just, I mean, for what... I mean, I see bubbles dancing around in it when I put it up to the light. Kind of hard to see when I just look at it from here. But for what I see in the glass, uh, I don't feel it on the palate. Um, I 
This is a very delicate beer. I do like it though. Uh, it's the palate isn't so much lemon as it was on the nose. Uh, it's a very it's kind of a mix of orange and lemon to me, anyways. I would say light to medium viscosity. Um, you see there's some legs there. It's got some legs on it. I think this was a 6% alcohol. Yeah, 6.1. So I would assume there would be legs here. Uh, I definitely get malt, but... I don't want to say bread crust. I hate using all those malt descriptors because everybody uses the same thing. Biscuity, bread crust, malty, and and I don't want to say that because that's not necessarily what I'm getting. Uh, it's it, One more time, one more time. This is a delicate palate and it, it's hard for me to decipher what exactly is going on in here. So there's definitely malt in there. Um, I'm just going to say Brady. I'm going to be a little generic with it. I'm sorry that I can't articulate exactly what I'm tasting. And I hate that, but it's kind of a delicate palate for me. I need to try more size odds. Um, for how delicate it is, though, there is some bitterness in here. Um, I would say the IBUs are somewhere between 25 and 35, if I had to guess. Does it, do they disclose the IBUs? I'm going to say no, but worth a shot. Yeah, they didn't disclose the IBUs, and that's fine with me. I'm not a big IBU stickler. I don't need to know how much bittering units are in there. Um, what would I rate this beer? So I'm hit with the malt at first, and it, it's accompanied with that orange and lemon citrusy thing going on. Um, and then back there in the finish, you get the, the bitterness from the hops. Um, very refreshing, but not a crisp or clean beer by any means. Um, this is very reminiscent of a Hefeweizen and a, and a Wick beer, although it definitely tastes somewhat different than either of the beers. Um, one more sip. One more sip. Sorry. <laughs> this is right up my alley, and this is why I wanted to start drinking more Allagash because I learned in that documentary that they're um, they're very heavily inspired by Belgium wheat beers and their flagship is Belgium is uh, Allagash white which is uh, a wit beer and a wit beer is my favorite style of beer bar none I, I love wit beers I think they're underappreciated in my opinion I'm going to have to give this Man, this is this is a really good beer. One more sip before I make my final decision. I'm going to give this a 4.5 out of a 5. It's solid A. I want to go 4.75. I really want to lean towards giving it, you know, bottom tier of the world class for me. But there's just not enough going on in this beer. 
for me to call it world class. But I, I love the beer. It's excellent, excellent beer. A rating beer for me. Uh, just nitpicking at this point, maybe just a little more bitterness, and I can't believe I'm saying that because I don't like a whole lot of bitterness in my beer anyways. And then, if I feel like the malt and that citrus is too muddled. It doesn't marry well together. Nothing complements each other. It just feels like a soup of malt and citrus as opposed to everything kind of working together if that makes any sense long review said a lot of stuff went on a lot of rabbit trails if you made it to this point god bless you 4.5 allagash times uh brasserie dupont until then next time guys cheers